Yeah, okay. Um, sorry for interruption. I was, uh, but the others have got hold of him. Again, notice uh, the um, attitude is being mentioned uh, many times. And he talks about, you know, all these characters, of course, in a mocking, funny way, and talking about, uh, you know, Turton and Burton and all this. You know, they were laughing, if you like, or mocking, um, as, as all of these characters are the same. Again, the, you talked and you, you mentioned the word bribes, and I, I think this is a, again a very funny thing to. So if you like, he's saying uh, how um, these Westerners also um, came again, if you like, for for their own materialistic gain and materialistic, um, if you like, reasons. Again, I think. In all these pages here in this uh, section, um, he said uh, that all English are the same. All uh, he said they are all the same, and uh, you know you would never be able to trust them way. And this is went on and on um, in this, uh, I think, um, uh, chapter uh, till maybe the the end. Um, we see that, um, and um, you know, he's here in this section. Um, he um, was asked to go to see his uh, um, the civil surgeon or the main the main figure who works with him as a doctor, and um, you know, or his name is Major, um, you know, Calendar or someone like like that. And really, the the um, the idea um, the idea, if you like, um, is is uh, quite interesting. That um, that uh, Indians are never even, to some extent, I think, are, are never respected by by these British colonial um, people who work there. So he went and or his boss to some extent in the hospital because remember Dr. Aziz was was a doctor, a practitioner and uh, and uh, he went to see him in his house and uh, he it turned out that even that uh, you know figure um, major calendar uh, had left and and didn't care about him at all. And I think this is you know here again when we see when uh, the two in a very funny way if you have seen the film, I told you to see the film. I think in the film it was very clear how uh, absolutely uh, the idea was clear how Dr. Aziz was neglected and even they never even asked um, to uh, whether this Tonga is free or not. So they took it immediately and uh, Dr. Aziz was left in his own. And here where he uh, went uh, being angry, of course, after this, he went to, uh, he met uh, Mrs. Moore uh, in the mosque at this, uh, at this section. And I think here, uh, Forster again gives us um, maybe an idea or some kind of uh, idea about, uh, you know, about the Hindus and about the makings of India. And again, he, he comes to talk about the uh, really the romantic, absolutely lovely way how he describes the mosque and the atmosphere, the moon, the moonlight and God and the marbles and, you know, the 99 names of God and so on. You know, the way Forster did this, you know, I think is a very, is a very intentional, again, to suggest that, that Forster was really praising and uh, uh, really in favor of India and as as a host, as he is, and he tried to symbolize the whole into some truth of religion or love. A mosque, by um, by winning his approval, let loose his imagination. The battle cry, more, much more, Islam, an attitude towards life, exquisite and durable where his body found their home. Now, I think this is a very lovely passage here um, at the end of this paragraph here in, in page uh, nine. I think we see here, as I said, the real admiration, the real 
the real, if you like, um, positive uh, elements that Forster really is looking at India uh, as a whole. Not just he's talking here about the mosque as being Islamic or, or anything. Uh, he's really talking about, about India, whether whether uh, else, because he admires in the same way the caves, because he looked at the caves, even even the caves, remember, they are just just empty, really weird caves. You know, he looked at them as, to some extent, absolutely sacred. And that's why maybe, you know, ironical could be ironical enough to see how, you know, the whole plot, the whole really, the main important heavy question was, if you like, uh, raised and to some extent or left unsolved in the caves, you know. So uh, here we see him uh, again imagining, said um, here after a while he met, uh, he met um, um, Mrs. Moore. And this is how they started speaking at the beginning of page 10. And I think, you know, this is very interesting to see this first, absolute first encounter to show you again how really Forster was, was as I said, a real humanist. Look what how he, for example, the, the way they spoke, you know, Dr. Aziz and, uh, um, you know, uh, Mrs. Moore when they met for the first time in the mosque. And how he said, Madam, Madam, Madam. And, you know, she said, oh, oh the woman gasped. Madam, this is a mosque. You have no right here at all. You should have taken off your shoes. This is a holy place for Muslims. I've taken them off. You have? I left them at the entrance. Then I ask your pardon. Still started, the woman moved out, keeping, keeping the um, ablution tank between them. I'm truly sorry for speaking. Yes, I was right. Was I not? If I remove my shoes, I am allowed. Of course. But so few ladies take the trouble, especially if thinking no one is there to see. That makes no difference. God is here. You know, really, this is a buzzword in this novel. God is here. You know, first I really wanted to say, you know, you people, why do you treat Indians as not, not humans? Why do, you, why do you look at them as animals? You know, this is absolutely wicked and horrible. And here, really, Mrs. Moore is saying this, I think, on behalf of Forster and on behalf of all those made, if you like, uh, good uh, Westerners, if you like, or could be in India as a whole. And, you know, Dr. Aziz was shocked and, you know, really surprised to, to hear uh, the word when she said that. Please let me go. Oh, can I do you some service now or at any time? No, thank you. Really none. Good night. May I know your name? She was now in the shadow of the gateway so that he could not see her face. But she saw him, the change of voice. Mrs. Noah, Mrs. Advancing, he found that she was old. A fabric bigger than the mosque fell to pieces. And he did not know whether he was glad or sorry. She was older than Hamidullah Gugum, with a red face and white hair. Her voice had received him. Mrs. Moore, I'm afraid I startled you. I shall tell you, I shall tell my community our friends about you, that God is here, very good, very fine indeed. I think you are newly arrived in India. Yes, how did you know? By the way you addressed me. I have on the club, they are doing a play that I have seen in London and it was uh, so hot. And you see here, you know how the the conversation started and really nicely developed. And if you like the real connection, the real friendship, the real, the real, again, if you like, between inverted commas, maybe, the real love between Indians and, and maybe British, according to what Forster wanted. 
Remember, Mrs. Moore is a very, and Dr. Aziz, you know, the way he looked at her, you know, in a very, really, absolutely very uh, positive and, if you like, you know, like um, a, um, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, like, could be like a she Christ to some extent, if I can go, if I can use this word. Um, although maybe I, I don't, I, I'm not saying that Forster is in any way really talking about Christianity or any religion in this. So is using all, uh, you know, purposes of connecting India and, and uh, really the uh, Britain, if you like, or the West. And here, um, Mrs. Moore told, tells Aziz that she is uh, here because she came to see her son and her son is the city magistrate. And um, Dr. Aziz said, oh, the city magistrate name is Mr. He Heslop or Heslop um, and uh, you know he was surprised about her and that's why uh, you know uh, we see uh, the idea uh, really developed later on and here you can see um, uh, again um, uh, you know the idea about the relationship uh, which developed later on to see or to make Aziz really ask them for this. Towards the end of this conversation, or the end of this chapter, in very apt way, very suitable way, the word Oriental. Look at it, for example, towards the end of this chapter. Notice, he said, um, uh, notice, uh, she was talking, um, uh, or Aziz was saying, you understand me, you know, what, what others feel, or if others resemble you. Rather surprised, she replied, I don't think I understand people very well. I only know whether I like or dislike them. Then you are an Oriental. You know, this is Dr. Aziz describing her as an Oriental. Edward Said's, um, you know, book and uh, terminologies using Oriental and Orientalist and the, uh, you know, all those um, people, you know, all these categories he's using there. Um, uh, again, she said, of course, the, you know, I'm saying here the way how they, they look at the, at the Orient. Notice she accepted his escort back to the club and said at the, at the gate that she wished she was a member so that she could have asked him in. So this is how, you know, the plot and the development of the story develops. In chapter three, you can see, um, for example, how, um, uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Moore um, came back to the club and uh, she uh, was talking to um, everybody else back again to the club. And here, I think, another buzzword which I highlighted for you when everybody was saying, you know, maybe uh, um, mainly her and Adela Quested, her name Adela Quested. Again, I think her name Quested from Quest could be questing to, you know, searching could be, yeah. You know, the name I think is symbolical here and maybe, maybe there is a pun here. Notice when she said, I wanted to see, I want to see the real, I wanted to see, or I want to see the real India. And you, know, you can see India. And again, notice what she said. I, I want to see it too. I mean, this is, of course, maybe Mrs. Moore and everybody else. But you see, everybody else, uh, uh, other maybe other whites, if you like, or other English, they were really amazed and surprised by, by this uh, question or by this uh, thing that they wanted to see India, you know, and they were, you know, uh, in a way they were mocking them to say, do you want to see India? You know, this place is, you know, everything uh, to to them, to some of them, it's, it's ugly, you know. Um, and again, uh, if you like, uh, somebody, you know, said here, of course, Mr. Fielding, later on we shall see who who said this something like, you know, uh, that India or this place, he said, India um, is not as bad as all that, if you like. Other side of the earth, if you like, 
but we, we stick to the same old norm. You know, again, I think here, um, you know, this is the idea to, to say we are sticking to the same old norm, meaning we have our, our old horrible idea that India is bad. India, you know, they are below us. Indians, Orientals are, you know, uncivilized, underdeveloped. They need help. They need etc. or if you like inhuman to so many other issues related to colonialism and I as I mentioned to you and talked to you concerning that about Darwinian idea about you know all these people who are underdeveloped who needs um, who may be these to some extent who need help who need uh, you know not just education but to be humanized maybe they are not even human according to Darwinian concepts, if you like. So that's why he said that we, you know, ideas, that's why he said we stick to the same old moon. Old moon, really, he means our own moon, our own ideas, our own ugly, really, uh, if you like, prejudice. And here I come back to uh, Jane Austen's, uh, you know, pride and prejudice. Yeah. It is prejudice against Orientals, against the Orient, against these, you know, people to say that, you know, they are not, not developed, not human, and so on. And again, um, we see this uh, uh, develops a little bit. Uh, we see um, uh, Mrs. Moore and Mrs. Quested and his wife, who were absolutely representatives of the, of the ugly whites in uh, really in, in India, as we shall see throughout the novel. Now, uh, if you like, here again, by, you know, quick uh, glimpse we meet, we meet Mr. Fielding uh, in this, uh, when they were talking, he was passing, remember, they were all in the club, and Fielding said something about, you know, he said, uh, how's one to see the real India? And, and Fielding immediately responded from far away. He said, try seeing Indians. The man answered and vanished. Who was that? Our schoolmaster, government college. As if, as if one could avoid seeing them, sighed Mrs. Leslie. You know, them here meaning Indians. You know, you know this is again, as I said, we, we, we are introduced to our friend, uh, Mr. Fielding novel. As I said, he is the only, he is the only white figure. He is the only white man and Mrs. Moore uh, equally. But of course, Mrs. Moore died. And, uh, you know, later on, we can think of uh, Miss Quested or Adela Quested, if we can forgive what she did to Aziz. We, we can see them as, you know, the only positive figures uh, or in this novel. As I said, we shall read, we have to read, we will read, we have to read the whole novel in this, you know, cultural, uh, absolute cultural um, um, perspective, the clashes, because that's the meaning of the novel. You know, that's when we're saying passage to India, how we can have a passage to India, how we can have a real road to India a real connection to, 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 to India. And we say a passage. Do we have only one passage or there could be more passages later on? You know, this is a imperial power. India was seen by many, 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 many people and politicians and so on. They say it was the jewel, that jewel in the crown of the imperial queen you know, mainly at that time during, uh, well, during the novel was not Queen Victoria, but I'm talking about the, uh, the real, the peak of the colonial uh, period, which was the 19th century. So here, um, you see, uh, we, 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 um, uh, we meet uh, Ding, as I said, who is a nice man, who is a government uh, college teacher or a schoolmaster, you know, and we see him immediately striking friendship with Aziz and, um, you know, everybody, you know, in a very nice way. Um, and we see, and um, 
uh, Adela and the other. Uh, maybe I can read for you to some extent again a, a very nice passage uh, again uh, on page 16. Notice, for example, here um, the Romanticism again. At the, nearly the top of the page, page 16, I think, yeah. Notice, Mrs. Moa, whom the club had um, stupefied, woke up outside, uh, woke up outside. She watched the moon, whose radiance stained with primrose, the purple of the surrounding sky. In England, the moon had seemed dead and alien. Here, she was caught in the shawl of night together with Earth and all the other stars. Again, I think this is Forster's love for India, when he's looking at the moon. He said, the moon in, in England is nearly dead and is ugly, alien, he said. Notice, she or had seemed dead and alien. But she means, she here means the moon. You know, in English, she for moon, he for sun. So notice here, she, meaning the moon in India, was caught in the shawl of night together with earth and all the other stars. A sudden sense of unity, of kinship, of kinship, with the heavenly behind. You see, again, I, I'm reading this again to uh, really highlight, to again emphasize for you the romanticism that Foster looks into the novel in a very, really nice way. Now, uh, again, look what he said that, in, I mean, the same page here, notice. No, really not in this country, it's not done. There is the danger from snakes for one thing. They are apt to lie out in the evening. This sounds very romantic, said Mrs. Quested, who was exceedingly fond of Mrs. Moore and was glad she should have had this little, um, little escapade. You meet a young man in a mosque and then never let me know? You know, here, of course, they were laughing telling her that she met Dr. Aziz in the mosque. And maybe a little bit, uh, you know, we see here the, if you like, the, um, the suspense that uh, uh, maybe um, uh, Adela, as we know, of course, directly. Really, Adela fell in love terribly, absolutely, horribly fell in love with Aziz. And she couldn't do, she couldn't really, she would never know what to do, because she came to be married to Mr. Hislop. And here she met Dr. Aziz, who's a widower, whose wife dead recently, attractive, again, really very to him. So that's why, you know, we see her say this, a doctor, I didn't know his name, a doctor, I know a doctor in Chandrapur, how odd. What was he like? And you see, we see the description of Dr. Aziz by Mrs. Moore. You know, again, we see to some extent here um, uh, about her son, again, meaning Mr. Hislop, uh, or the man who's supposed to be, um, you know, engaged to Adela. Again, who is very, uh, I think, very terrible the way he looks down on Indians, the way he treats Indians, the way he is so ugly with the Indians, the way he judges and really misjudges and abuse judging uh, people because he's his job as a judge, you know, he, it was it's very easy for him to sentence anybody to imprisonment or, or something. Well, well, maybe, maybe part of spite to some extent in, in so many ways. So that's why he said, uh, Oh, good, oh, good gracious, not a Mohammedan. Why ever didn't you tell me you had been talking to a, a native? I was going, uh, was going all wrong. You know, uh, again, notice here, you know, again, using Mohammedan. Again, I think, again, the word native. These are, if you like, the two buzzwords again. Again, notice he said, a Mohammedan? How perfectly magnificent, exclaimed Miss Quested. You see, immediately how Miss Quested or Adela 
unlike or absolutely, uh, you know, in contrast to Ronnie, because Ronnie is Mr. Hislop, he's the boy, she's, he's the city magistrate, he's the one he, she's engaged to, and she came here to marry him. So notice how much she's showing absolute uh, pure admiration of a Muhammadan without even seeing him or knowing him, knowing uh, Ronnie a lot, and he didn't like it. So um, again, I think we see this, uh, again, notice in the next paragraph, notice the idea, notice, what a mix up, what a mix up. Again, this is the idea, mix up, you know? Again, I think this mix up, again, we'll, we'll come to this idea many times. It's something like a muddle, and the word muddle, and maybe we don't know what's going on. It is one of the key words in this novel. You'd never, Forster is saying you would never, you could never understand India. And that's why he said, you know, um, the narrator is saying, what a mix up. Meaning for India, for Rani, for Mrs. Quested, for Mrs. Mua, for Dr. Aziz, and so on. Again, we shall see, even in the film it was made clear, that maybe Aziz also was slightly, um, you know, to some extent, you know, attracted to, to Adela, but he didn't show it. Notice, why, the narrator again said, or Forster, why hadn't he indicated that she was talking about an Indian? scratchy and dictatorial, you know? Look at this, how, you know, the narrator describing the whole idea. This idea is a scratchy. It makes you, you know, itchy. You want to scratch. And I think this is a very funny thing. We see when, when you are always in trouble or you always say, oh, you start scratching, you scratch. And, you know, to say you are in, in, in a real, maybe could be situation. Now, again, we see this, the idea to say that um, the question of nerves, I think, is, is used here in this, uh, in this uh, section. Notice when Mrs. Moore said, um, his answers were all on edge. I could tell from his voice. As soon as I answered, he, he altered. And, you know, the, the way they were talking about Dr. Aziz and all this, um, of course, remember, remember um, um, her son, uh, Ronnie, the city magistrate, is happy about this and he would never want them to meet him. And that's why the narrator on the next page, at the, at the top of page 18, he said he wanted to inquire about the, the Muhammadan doctor in the mosque. It was his duty to report suspicious characters and conceivably it was some disreputable, um, you know, again notice here, disreputable Hakir, who had prowled up from the bazaar. Um, one, that it was someone connected with the, you know, Mintu hospital. So notice the narrator immediately saying again that for, for the city magistrate, um, for his, his stop and for the British ideology and, you know, for the colonialist ideology, it is their duty to ask and to watch and to, if you like, um, you, know, sus you know, really in a way to suspect people all the time, I think is one uh, very, very important uh, thing. We see this. And his mother, of course, Mrs. Uh, uh, Moore was really very angry to say, come on, you should not talk about that. You should never worry about that. It was only a private conversation between me and him. And she told him a private conversation. And of course, uh, you know, notice her son said, nothing is private in India. Aziz knew what he spoke out. So don't you worry. He had some motive in what he said. My personal belief is that the mark wasn't true. Notice immediately here, Mr. Uh, you know, Heeslaw, Ronnie, Mrs. Moore's son, the city man, immediately decided, immediately, taken for granted, he's saying that Aziz was doing something suspicious, and that's why he said he could never be, he could never be innocent. Notice, 
He said, nothing is private in India. Aziz knew that when he spoke out, sorry, he had some motive in what he said. My personal belief. Notice here, my belief. I don't care about you, you know? So this, this is it. This is it, you know? And I think here a real discussion develops between Mrs. Moore and her son about uh, the position of what they are doing here. I mean, as British people, what are you doing here? And again, notice he said to her in a very ugly way, you know, he said, um, notice he said, you never used to judge people like this at home. And he said, India isn't home. India isn't home. Well, well that's it. Well, you are here for years and years and years. And why do you think India isn't home? Well, okay. Well, this is it. Yes, I think. I think for us, for Orientals, for people like us, maybe for Indians, yes. We would never welcome you to be, um, to think of India as home. When he's saying India is not home, we are here to use India. We are here to take anything good for us from India, to steal India, to rob India from all its riches. And really, this is the idea. His mother really was angry when he said that. Notice when, uh, when he said um, uh, about this, notice his funny attitude, he said, uh, please, in return, please don't talk about Aziz to Adela. And I think this is funny, isn't it? This is funny. Why is he saying don't tell Adela about Aziz? <laughs> what? Why? Well, again, I think this is a hint by the narrator, by Forster saying, hey, when Aziz, when Adela is going to see Aziz, she's going to fall in love with him. Ah, 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 Isn't it? And I think this is the idea when he's saying, please don't tell, don't talk about Aziz to, to Adela. You know, and, and his mother said, why? You know, again, and he could, he couldn't explain it. He said, I really can't explain everything. I don't want Adela to be worried. That's the fact. She'll begin wondering whether we treat the natives and all that sort of nonsense. Uh -huh. So treating people, treating Indians in a bad way to him is nonsense. Treating the natives badly is nonsense. Well, yes, to Mrs. Moore, to Mr. Fielding, and to Adela, treating Indians the way they were treated, yes, absolutely, is wicked, is horrible. But to Ronnie and everybody else amongst all these colonials, yeah, to think about this, maybe this is nonsense. You know, she said, uh, well, but she came out to be worried. That's exactly why she's here. Meaning Mrs. Moore saying, come on, she came here to know you. She came here to marry you. And I think um, the narrator, Forster, wanted to tell us something about that. Notice, the note of anxiety, I'm reading the next paragraph, the note of anxiety in his voice made her feel that he was still a little boy who must have what he liked. So she promised to do, so promised to do as he wished. And I think this is a very interesting thing. Yeah, we look at him as, yes, as a young boy, still really as a young boy. And I think this is true. These people who are running, who, who are colonials, really, really, in a way, saying they are absolutely horrible and they are not grown-ups. They don't know the facts of life. They don't know the reality of things. And again, um, notice here what the idea uh, uh, what, uh, you know, thinking about it. Notice, go down a few lines. Yet, it could be worked into quite an unpleasant scene. The doctor had begun by bullying her, had said Mrs. Callender was nice, and then finding the ground safe had changed. He had alternately whined over his grievances and patronized her, had run a dozen ways in a single sentence, had been unreliable, in 
in inquisitive vein, yes, it was all true. But how false as a summary of the man. The essential life of him had been slain. Now, the narrator here, I think, is judging to some extent what maybe all these white people would think about Dr. Aziz in this sense. And I think, you know, uh, this is uh, quite really interesting. Uh, how it is. Now, I really, I would like to um, stop here um, today uh, and I will continue next time.